Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and console support on open source game engines is a challenging problem. Uh, the way that Godot are solving it is by spinning off with W4 Games and other private companies that add that support in. Another game engine we're talking about today, Default, did it via a different route. The cool thing is, the Default game engine, which is completely free, it is almost open source. It's all but open source, it's just not an OSI certified license. It uh, now has PlayStation 4 support with PlayStation 5 coming soon. This joins other platforms as well. If you've never heard of the Default game engine before. I love this one. I've done a couple tutorials on it in the past. It is a very performant game engine. This started life at King. Uh, they used it internally for their own game developments, and then they spun it off as its own project. As you can see here, it is available on a wide variety of platforms, including now PlayStation 4, uh, Windows, Nintendo Switch, Steam, Android, HTML5, iOS, Facebook, Mac OS, PlayStation 5 is coming later this year, Linux, and then Xbox as well. So that's really cool. You can run this thing on a wide variety of platforms. Uh, if you've never seen it in an action before. It has been used to create um, shipped games. It definitely is battle tested in that regard. Let's go take a quick look at it. Here is a sample project you can grab. It kind of shows what it is capable of. It is a very different approach to game development. You're using uh, game objects. Everything is Lua based and you can communicate via simple scripting. So for example, you can see this guy is composed of a variety of different game objects here, including the camera. This camera, for example, has a script object attached to it. And then we can open up the script. So that is the camera script that's attached to it. I think this opens the script up here. And it's this Lua-based language. Everything is built in, so you do have full code editing here. There's also uh, Visual Studio Code editors, etc. if you do not want to work in their editor itself. But as you see here, it uses this message passing system. At first, it's a little confusing. And then eventually, you just kind of get used to it. Everything, again, in the world is game objects, like so. Here you can see they're, they're setting up uh, parallax scrolling in the background. So for this particular project, we can kind of see the results here. This has the weirdest aspect ratio of a demo project I have ever seen. But you can see here, it's for creating uh, animated objects. You've got all the support in there for um, sprite objects. There is support in here also for 3D, by the way. So if you want to make like a 2.5D game, you can do that as well. And you can see here, you've got tile map editor. These are all tile maps that are created in the front. Um, you've got parallax layers being done here. Let's go take a quick look at the tile map. So here is the uh, level. This is the tile map used to create the level, this is all drawn using tiles. You do have a full tile editor built in here as well. Uh, you got various different layers available. Uh, you can paint and draw tiles as you can see going on right here. It's, it's a full functioning 2D mostly game engine. And I am again, a big fan of it. I find the default game engine pretty cool. Uh, again, it's very unique in its approach to how you code it and how things work. It's also got good solid performance. And the cool thing here is we now also have support for a variety of platforms. So PlayStation 4 support was just announced. Uh, so today they announced the immediate availability of PlayStation 4 development in the default game engine for approved PlayStation developers. This is a key thing you wanna know about. If you're gonna develop for one of these closed platforms, that being um, PlayStation, Switch, and then in the future, the Xbox, you still need to have a development account with those companies. Um, so you're gonna have to sign an NDA with them, register your account with them, and so on and so forth to get the development tools you need from the console owner. So this doesn't mean you're gonna be able to develop games for your own PlayStation right now. You still need to be a certified Sony developer. Uh, so approved PlayStation developers, uh, basic access to the required tools and documentation will be granted free of charge. Well, source code access is available as a paid membership tier. It's actually, there's a pretty good price tag involved in it, but the truth of the matter is if you are publishing for a PlayStation in the capacity that you need to make, like that um, you're publishing a game commercially, the cost becomes a much smaller concern. But we'll look at exactly what that price is right there. But the thing you gotta be aware of here is unless you are actually modifying the source code, you don't need to have source code license. That's just if you're going to be making changes. So you're only gonna have to pay if you actually need access to that source code. So uh, again, no source code, full source code access is not necessary to release games made with default on the PlayStation. Uh, so approved PlayStation developers will be able to set up default and build their games for PlayStation in a matter of minutes. Uh, adding support has been a passion project for the default team, extremely satisfying to be able to share with other developers of the game developed uh, other Oh, uh, sorry. With our global uh, community of game developers, we are looking forward to playing some of our favorite games made with the Fold on PlayStation, said the Fold uh, product owner, Bjorn uh, Ritzel. Uh, and then a little bit more detail here. So again, one thing to be aware of, and it's down here, I thought. 
I guess it's not in this post. It's in the documentation, which by the way, is available over here. If you're wondering about PlayStation 5 support, it is in fact coming later in the year. There are some details about you know, why they charge for source code and how all that works. Uh, and again, you don't necessarily need that there. Uh, PlayStation 5 support, again, coming later on this year and hopefully Xbox support beginning of next year, which is quite nice. So uh, to get access to the source code, which again, I got to reiterate, you do not need. You can develop games. All you need is the Fold, which is a free download and a, um, you know, developer agreement with the console that you are targeting. So you need to be part of their developer program. Uh, but their donation system available right here. So if you want to have access to the source code, you need to go, uh, for example, if you do it via Patreon, and it's weird, they haven't updated the, uh, the details here yet, but this is the tier here uh, where you're getting Nintendo Switch source code access. I'm imagining that's where PlayStation is because there's no mention of PlayStation down here yet either. So I'm guessing it's about this tier. So I bet you that's 284 Canadian, a little bit over, but probably 225 USD uh, a month uh, for source code access. But truth of the matter is, again, if you need that source code access, there's a pretty good chance that you are already making money. Uh, so it should be much more reasonable. And again, reiterate for the fifth time, you do not need to pay to make your game publishable on there's only if you need to have source code access to that stuff as i mentioned earlier on uh they did add nintendo switch support as well in the past and they do have xbox support coming soon which is very cool also um just to be aware of it this demo right here yeah, is one of their free demonstration projects uh available right on their website so you're going to find they've got a number of different assets available here things that you know if you need a script say to control the camera or whatever you've got a number of different camera supports available over here. Uh, so there's a really cool asset store going with it. You can go into the template projects and you can find a number of these templates like this guy over here. There's also a built-in uh, library system so you can actually link to these things directly from inside of the editor, which is pretty cool. But again, uh, I am a big fan of the default engine. It's not going to be for everyone. It's got a very different uh, approach to game development. Uh, but once it kind of jibes with you, like once you wrap your head around how it actually works, you start intuitively guessing how other things are implemented. So there's a learning curve at first that you find very, very confusing. But once you get over that learning curve, you're going to find that the engine is very capable and intuitive in a lot of ways. You get these cool things like UI layers are already built in for you. All of your tooling is there. There's full physics support in this guy. Uh, if you do not like Lua though, this is definitely not the engine for you. But otherwise, high performance game engine across a variety of different platforms. And one of those platforms now includes PlayStation. And then hopefully soon we will see an Xbox added over here at the beginning of next year. And again, later on this year, we should see PlayStation 5 support. Although a PlayStation 4 game can be published on PlayStation 5 through compatibility mode. Uh, so it shouldn't hold you up for now. And I got a feeling if you're developing a default 2D style game, you probably don't need the latest and greatest of PlayStation 5 features at this point in time. So you're probably good to go. But native PlayStation 5 support should come later this year. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. The default game engine, which by the way, I did a full tutorial series on it. I will link that down below as well. An excellent engine. I highly recommend checking it out. And it now supports PlayStation. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.